Hi, thanks for joining us. With us today is John Larkin. John is a partner in our Bridgehampton office. And among other things, John is also an aficionado of something called Celtic punk. John, do you want to tell our viewers exactly what that is? Well, I like traditional Irish music. Um, and I also like uh, metal and punk. So when you mix the two of them together, uh, you get Celtic punk. Good, good to know. Anyhow, on to our subject today, which uh, deals more with uh, valuation and, and what things are affecting businesses uh, as a result of the, the pandemic. Uh, how have the events of the past few months changed the, the business valuation process? Obviously, there's a big difference now between valuing somebody or a business on December 31st, or maybe February 1st, or May 31st, right? It's not a lot of time between those dates, but as we all know, a lot of things occurred very quickly around those dates, and a business being valued at the end of the year compared to today could be vastly different uh, depending on what industry they're in. Is there anything that's positively affecting valuation at the moment? Well, again, it probably depends on what your what the, the purpose of the valuation is for, right? I do a lot of trust in estate work. Um, so if there's a, a positive spin on COVID, if you're valuing a business as of today versus what it was at the end of the year, uh, more than likely the value is going to be a lot lower and will certainly have a potentially a positive effect on the estate. So if you if you if you have a business and you're looking to make transfers. You've got two things going for you. You've got a possible decline in value, as well as we're still in an environment where you have a large state and gift tax exclusion. Would you think, would you be recommending business transfers at the moment? Yeah, I think it's a great time to be transferring businesses. As you said, you know, the potential for a decrease in the unified credit is certainly there with the elections, whether it's a Democratic or Republican win, you know, the chances are a change in the estate laws is pretty high. And with the COVID uh, pandemic, uh, more than likely, most businesses are, are worth less today, or at least give the opportunity to take a lower valuation on. How should businesses approach determining what they're worth in the current environment? Are there things that you, uh, you advise business owners to be doing at the moment to collect certain information or you know, just what approach should they take to the valuation process? Well, I, I, you know, I think with, if you're looking to transfer a business either to uh, new owners, whether you're selling the business or, or doing some type of gifting or sale to employees or somebody else, right? It's, it's not a six month process. It's something that really should take uh, a lot of time and thinking to, you know, if, if you're looking to increase the value, um, you don't just wake up today and say, I want to sell my business and make it worth more, right? There's a whole process and a lot of things that can be done to increase the value of the business. You know, a lot of businesses are geared more towards tax benefits. So they either, you know, defer income or pay more expenses, or they pay a lot of personal expenses, maybe, or, or questionable expenses. You know, the whole idea of trying to maximize the value of the business is, is increasing your earnings, right? Make it more appealing to a buyer. So, uh, John, as my valuation person, I'm going to be looking to you, you know, in a few months to value my business in an interim before that. What can I do to either uh, minimize the adverse effects of the current business environment or what might I do to my business to try to enhance value uh, so that we can make it as, as attractive as possible for a potential buyer? Right. Well, the first thing I would say is we probably should have been talking about this well over a year ago. But, you know, again, it's, it's trying to increase uh, your bottom line, right? Trying to either be more cost effective, uh, you know, cut down on costs if you can, maybe increase your, your revenue in some way, whether it's um, maybe not selling low margin products or services, probably getting rid of, again, personal expenses, uh, cleaning up your AR, cleaning up obsolete inventory, you know, all of the types of things that are going to enhance your bottom line again, because that's what's going to be more attractive to a buyer. Are you, are you seeing a lot of valuation activity in, in the M&A context? Are you seeing a lot of um, people who are selling businesses other than distressed sales at the moment, where there's 
uh, activity going on, or is that? No, I mean personally, I'm not. Again, I you know I do a lot of trust and estate work, so from that aspect, things are getting very busy because, as we talked about, people are more concerned about you know the estate laws changing, and again, now is a great time to maybe put a low value on a business and transfer as much as you can to your children or whoever it is you're looking to transfer the business to. Okay, but on the M&A side, the activity seems to be quiet at the moment. Uh, you know, I, I, from my aspect, yeah. And I think at least probably the reason there is uncertainty, right? Uncertainty, you know, when you're buying a business, unless you really know a lot about that industry or that particular business, uncertainty just really um, does not make for a good environment. Um, and if I'm a seller, uh, you know, a, a downturn like we're having is probably not the time to be selling your business. You're selling it at, into weakness rather than selling when you're strong. If you were a buyer, would you be out looking for other businesses to buy? And, sure. And, and, <laughs> and, and, and so from a valuation standpoint, uh, you're advising the buyer now. What sorts of uh, discounts, what sorts of approaches to valuation are you taking uh, to really uh, have a significant impact on the on the buy side? Well, if you're a buyer, you're not really going to get into discounts, right? I mean, a buyer's really looking either for a strategic buy or a distressed business if they feel like they can get a business cheap. Um, you know, there's probably lots of that in New York City right now or certain industries. You know, restaurants certainly are not what they used to be uh, you know, even eight months ago, it's it, it's really a distressed industry, and I'm sure there's plenty of other industries in the same circumstance. So, if, so if do I'm you, looking do you, for a cheap business uh, now would be a time to go find them. So, do you see this as a as an opportune time to start uh, consolidation in certain industries, restaurants, hospitality? I would say so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. In terms of uh, what you do, what we do as a firm, how can we help owners? Uh, make these kinds of determinations? Well, again, it comes back to if, if you're really looking to transition your business, the more time you spend preparing for it, right? It's like dressing up for the wedding. It's, it's getting the business ready to be sold. And all of some of the things we've talked about in the window dressing, right? Get rid of the personal stuff. Try to enhance your earnings. Um, maybe look into different product lines that don't work or maybe ones that you should be or you know, again, coming back to COVID is maybe now's the time to cut back on office space or cut back on employees, or maybe there's employees that you can now hire somewhere else across the country because they don't need to be in your physical office now. There's certainly a lot of opportunities there to make your business maybe more efficient, which then makes it more valuable. Any final words you want to share with our viewers? You know, there's also a big tax component to selling your business. And I think that's an important thing that a lot of people don't think about. It's an afterthought. So how you sell your business, the structure it, it takes on, uh, all affects your decision to sell or transfer the business. There you go. Thanks very much, John. Sure, you're welcome, Mike. <laughs>